everybody I'm Garrett you're watching 11 bang bang this is the Ruger Blackhawk and this one is in the four and five eighths inch barrel 45 Colt now the reason that we have this is because I uh, was talking to Plowboy's ghost he kind of made a few videos about souping up 45 Colt to Magnum specs and so I got kind of interested in doing that and this is by all means a Magnum gun Right now, what we're shooting here today, and you can see I got a mark red on the back, and there's a reason for that. These are 315 grain gas check hard cast uh, lead flat point bullet over 24 grains of Hodgdon H110. Now, let me tell you, this is a Ruger only load, and not only Rugers, it's big frame Rugers. Do not try to shoot these loads in a Ruger New Vaquero or especially a Italian remake repro of a 73 single action probably wouldn't be good. The only guns you can really shoot these in are old Vaqueros, Blackhawks, Red Hawks, and make sure it's a large flame frame Blackhawk by the way, and uh, a few other guns like maybe your Marlin 1895 or maybe an 1892 Rossi. I'm not sure on that one but I've seen people do it. Do this at your own risk is what I'm saying. This is actual written down data though from Hodgdon's 2013 manual that says this is the top of the 45 Colt Blackhawk load. 24 grains and a 315 grain bullet is as high as you want to go. Like I said, do not, do not, do not shoot these in any single action army replica or even an original single action army. I don't believe that's a good idea needs to be in one of these Blackhawks, one of these Ruger large frame revolvers, or a Thompson Center contender. I believe that's also uh, agreed upon. But anyway, as you can see, big fat bullet, marked red on the back, so I don't ever wind up putting it in anything I shouldn't. And you all know how the Ruger Blackhawk works. Basically, you just open the gate there. It only has two clicks. It's not like a Colt single action. Never was intended to be. And then you just take and you uh, load your chambers when you're dealing with this much recoil which is significantly more recoil than a 44 magnum in this particular package i can tell you from experience a lot of shooting 44 magnums my first handgun was a ruger super blackhawk and 44 magnum shot 44 magnums all my life this right here is going to give you far more recoil as a matter of fact i believe this is 30 foot pounds of recoil Whereas a standard 44 Magnum in this exact same gun size would be about 26 or 27 foot pounds of recoil. Doesn't sound like much, I know, but remember, 454 Casul is only 35 to 38 foot pounds of recoil. So this is right between 44 Magnum and 454 Casul. That's doing pretty good. Really good. Think I'm calming down. Right through the other hole. One, two, three, four, five, six. All of them within the size of a fist at 10 yards. That's good enough for me. Okay, so a few things about this gun. When it first came, these grips were absolutely terrible. Uh, it had some plastic grips on it. I went ahead and I went and replaced those. This are actually made out of a piece of oak that my uncle cut down in the 80s and had a rough, rough saw mill. I still have the board. Very, very hard stuff. Uh, as a matter of fact, I found once I got it down to the thinness that I wanted, it was so hard it was brittle and it broke a couple times. So we're going to see how they hold up over time to this recoil. If they do break, I'll just get me another set of wooden grips. But the plastic grips that came with this were just terrible. There was uh, almost eighth of an inch gap <laughs> between it and the frame when everything was lined up. You could see daylight clear through the grip panels there. So that was never going to do. Not only that, they were too thin. They were pretty sharp and uh, just they weren't pleasant to shoot. So I replaced that right away and then we did the plowboy trick of reaming the cylinders which came out to about a 451 which would be great for shooting a jacketed bullet. 
but that's not great if you're shooting lead hard cast. So we went ahead and reamed the cylinders out the plowboy style, which is sandpaper and a, and a uh, shotgun cleaning rod. It's a whole thing. You'll have to go watch his video on his uh, Ruger Vaquero, Plowboy's Ruger Vaquero. I'll link to it down here below the, the description of this video. But we did that. Uh, I've had to work on the sights a little bit today because, like I said, they're just jumping all over the place with this recoil. But uh, other than that, let's let Caleb shoot it and see what he thinks. Blow him up, Caleb. He's even got glasses and hearing protection. Missed him. What do you think? I like you. Did it hurt your hand any? No? All right, guys, 24 grains of H110, 315 grain gas check, uh, lead flat nose. See what we get out of her here at about 10 feet. 1234. 1262. 13. 1321. Oh, that was a hot one. I don't know what happened there. Maybe that was a bad read. 12.74. That is a big spread. 11.95. One more. This is a bad spread for what we got going on here. 12.53. All right. Well, I'm going to load up a handful more and see if we get a little more consistent result. All right, we're gonna take out that highest and lowest number. There was an 1100 and a 1300. I don't know if those were correct. They seem like they were really, really spread. So I'm gonna give it uh, two more shots to see if we can fill in those. 1253, base pin jumped. You gotta be careful of that with these heavy recoiling rounds. Might need a belt mountain base pin to be able to handle all this recoil. Didn't read. 1274, so that should be two more. All right, that should, that, that's more with it. So we'll take that high and that low out and read those two numbers right there. 12. <clears throat> All right, a couple things I noticed, this screw on this site with such recoil was bouncing down and catching on the lip and not coming all the way back up and also getting a little side to side play. I've moved that around. Hopefully we're better off now. I think it's hitting about where I needed to. And one thing you just gotta watch when you got this much recoil with a standard rear Ruger sight might bounce its way around. All right, let's see if we can blow up some milk jugs. What do you say? Let's go one handed to start with. See if we can hurt ourselves. I'd say that does the job, wouldn't you? <laughs> Getting a little more comfortable with it. We uh, took the top off of that one. I didn't aim to, I aimed a little, little high, but let's shoot a little lower, see if we can blow that one up. There we go. Okay, so up to this point, we've never had anything actually shoot all the way through that propane jug down there. And uh, we've shot it with 5070 black powder, 4570 black powder. Nothing's ever gone clear through it. I'm thinking this might be the day that happens. Let's see what we got. We didn't go all the way through, but that was about the best we've done as far as uh, putting a dent in the back. I want to show you something. Might want to wear gloves when you're shooting one of these with this little grip. If you had the uh, Bisley style Ruger grip, probably be a lot better, but that thing is rolling up every time and impacting the back of my hand. Not a big deal, but uh, think about putting a Bisley grip on this would be a lot better. Luckily, these grips are actually holding up. It's really putting the horsepower out there well over 1,200 feet per second out of this little gun with a big 315 grain bullet. This is a lot of horsepower for a 45 Colt. And while you might say, why wouldn't you just get a 44 Magnum? Well, you can. Uh, like I said, had a lot of 44 Magnums in my life. We have some now. I uh, just want to do something different. And another reason you might do it is the 44 Magnum is always going to come in the uh, Ruger Super Blackhawk form, and that's more expensive than this. 
So for around $600, which is what I paid for this gun, you are getting an incredible amount of horsepower for about $200 cheaper than you would if you went for the 44 Magnum. Neither here nor there, 44 Magnum is still a great round. They're both really doing about the same thing. If you hand load for both of them, you can get 44 Magnum really, really hot and you can make it do basically the same thing. And some people say with better penetration, I don't know if I agree with that. You can shoot some pretty heavy bullets out of this gun right here. Grip uh, frame panels on these uh, need to be, the grip panels need to be replaced pretty well right away, unless you just don't mind those massive gaps in the plastic. Uh, the sight on the back here needs to be, uh, make sure that that screw is in a place where it's not gonna hick up and catch because it's done that to me several times today and it might actually catch in a high position. It might catch in a low position. I might have to get one of those Bowen rear sights. There's, there's several other uh, higher grade rear sights you can get for this kind of horsepower, shall we say. You don't want things bouncing around like that. Uh, other than that, uh, I don't have a lot left to say. This is the uh, Ruger Super Blackhawk and I am in 45 Colt and I am shooting the 45 Plowboy Magnum. This is I'm gonna label them from now on. A lot of horsepower, about all you're ever going to be able to squeeze out of this platform with this cylinder. That's about all you're going to get is what we shot here today. So, as always, trust in God. Keep the powder dry. Bye.